So hello and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be talking about obedience. And the reason this came up is because I just got done reading Jeremiah. And to be honest with you, that book really disturbed me. Just felt like God was railing and railing on these people for, you know, 50 chapters. You know, you messed up, so I'm going to destroy you and send people to kill you by the sword and kill you by pestilence and kill you by famine and just all these horrible things. And I honestly had a hard time dealing with that. How does this square with a loving God? And so it kept talking about this is happening to you because you didn't obey me. So obedience seems to be a really big thing with God. So I want to understand more. You know, I want to get that. Why is he so upset with disobedience? So uh, (laughs) that's what this episode's about. What is God's view on obedience? So as always, let's learn together. Verses about obedience. 1 John 2.17 The world is passing away with its lusts, but he who does God's will remains forever. 1 John 3.22 So whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Deuteronomy 5.29 Oh, that there were such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Deuteronomy 6.3 Hear, therefore, Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with you, and that you may increase mightily, as Yahweh, the God of our fathers, has promised to you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Deuteronomy 6.18 You shall do that which is right and good in Yahweh's sight, that it may be well with you, and that you may go in and possess the good land which Yahweh swore to your fathers. Deuteronomy 7.12 It shall happen, because you listen to these ordinances and keep and do them, that Yahweh your God will keep you the covenant and the loving kindness which he swore to your fathers. Deuteronomy 29, 9. Therefore keep the words of this covenant and do them, that you may prosper in all that you do. Deuteronomy 30, 15 to 16. Behold, I have set before you today life and prosperity and death and evil. For I command you today to love Yahweh your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments, his statutes and his ordinances, that you may live and multiply and that Yahweh your God may bless you in the land where you go in to possess it. Hebrews 5 9. Having been made perfect, he became to all of those who obey him the author of eternal salvation. James 1 25. But he looks into the perfect law of freedom and continues, not being a hearer who forgets, but a doer of the work. This man will be blessed in what he does. John 14, 23, Jesus answered him, If a man loves me, he will keep my word. My father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. John fifteen ten, If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. Matthew 5.19 Therefore, whoever shall break one of these least commandments and teach others to do so 
shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever shall do and teach them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 7.21 Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven. Matthew 7, 24 to 25. Everyone, therefore, who hears these words of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it didn't fall, for it was founded on the rock. Matthew 12.50 For whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven, he is my brother and sister and mother. Philippians 4.9 The things which you learned, received, heard, and saw in me do, do these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Romans 2, three, For it isn't the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law will be justified. May God add blessing to the reading of his word. Well, now for our new modern expression. It's better to give than receive. And this means it is the right thing to do and makes you happier to give to someone than to receive from someone. And I always connected this with Christmas. When I complained, Mom, Dad, why so few presents over Christmas? We need more. And they would say, you know, it's better to give than to receive. And this comes from the book of Acts 20. 35. In all things, I gave you an example that so laboring, you ought to help the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive.